It's time for the Gizwiz with Mads Maddest Rider, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1712, recorded Thursday, January 31st, 2019. Pictocurrency. On this episode of the Gizwiz, this is the last dedicated CES only show. It's the end of January, so February's coming up with a new crappy corner. We do have a great uh, gadget warehouse and a nice letter from you guys all next on the Gizwiz. It's the Sandman Show with Dickie D. And OMG chat on your PC. It's time for the Gizwiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease. Under pathology. Rows and rows of USBs. Growing, growing LEDs. Get ready for the Gizwiz now. 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 And here he is, the gadget provocateur, Dick D. Bartolo. How are you doing, Dickie D? I don't even know what that uh, word means. I'm doing fine. I, I don't know the well, definition wearing... of that word. I hope that's not a bad thing. No, that sounds good. No, okay. what was it again? Provocateur. Like you're provocative. Uh, yeah, I'm that. I'm that. Sure. I think it's some sort of a MC kind of thing, a leader. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure either. Someone uh, send anyway. us a letter. Let us know what that word means. <laughs> um, to provoke. You provoke, provoke gadgets. You make. Oh them... yeah, yeah. I'm provoking. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I think that makes exactly. sense. And wearing uh, eight layers of clothes. It was uh, four here last night. Gosh. And now <laughs> it's uh, it's eleven. We're in double digits here. Oh my gosh. So for those uh -oh. in Celsius degrees, I think that's like negative. It's negative something. It's below freezing. Oh, it's negative four million. I think. Yeah, and that's. In but I don't. I I could oh. be off a couple. Of <laughs> Just a few degrees there. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so here in Dallas, it's not quite nearly that cold, but I can't, I feel bad. I feel bad for you. My God. Well, Chicago, I believe it was, uh, like 10 below actual and the wind chill was like 30 below. It's, 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 I don't like this weather. No. It's easier when it's hot. I think it's easy when it's hot to get cool. Oh, yeah. Then when it's freezing to get hot. Well, it's also like moving from one place to another when it's hot is is not comfortable, but it's okay if you have to walk outside from one spot to another. Um, and coldness is just, it's just like painful. I don't like it, it at all. Um, <laughs> and, and so, yeah, I don't like, that. I mean, obviously e either of them extended amounts of time are just horrible. Yeah, heat yes, exactly. can you know just it can kill you pretty quick. Oh, so can coldness, but you know heat heat might be the uh, worst if you're just if you just have to stand in a long line outside. Um, but day to day, I prefer the heat if I'm not stuck in a horrible situation. Yeah, yeah, me too. Because uh, the, you know you're not supposed to have the oven on, but I I do have the oven on. And the first time I ever used uh, the universal power supply, I've had it like 10 years. And like uh, two months ago, the battery went dead and I looked up and the battery, the replacement battery is 70 bucks. And I thought, just get you know, one. I haven't used that much. Should I, I, I I finally bought a replacement battery. And then the other day I was doing a radio show. I had two electric heaters on. And about five minutes from the end, suddenly everything went out, except fortunately it was radio. And my computer stayed on, the monitor stayed on, the mic stayed on, because I had them all plugged into the UPS. And I thought, finally, it's Some, Finally years, it worked. You know, I my, have that same my, situation, but uh, the one thing that's not on the un un uninterruptible power supply is the internet. So, oh. <laughs> power goes down. <laughs> the computer stays on. The oh, internet right. no, instantly no, I have dies. The route, I have the router plugged <laughs> that's into smart. it. Yeah. I have, I have the router, the mic, the monitor, and the computer that I use. So... And the fact oh, that it was good. radio, it just stayed on longer because I didn't have to uh, be using the uh, uh, internet as much. Um, anyway, oh, you know, I sent you a photo, right. and I did not see this at CES, but I had the press release on it, and I thought this was a great idea. So tell me what you think of this. Okay, um, so I don't is... know exactly what I'm looking at, but it's okay. So that, that's good. So. This uh, a teacher invented this, and it's it would be great at CES. 
it goes on the bathroom. It's not not for you to buy for your home. Okay. It's for a commercial place like the convention center. And when you lock the door, you there's a pocket there. See with the word stall? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, that, right. That. That's hollow between stall and where they have all that other written. And it's for you to stand your phone in. Mm-hmm. So that when you leave the bathroom stall, you will not forget your phone. Oh. And they told me also it's big enough that you could drop your wallet in there. And it's just a way I heard it twice at CES. Nothing worse than hearing a phone hit tile. Oh, yeah. And then also <laughs> in the bathroom, you're like, I don't even want to put this on my face anymore. Yes, yes, exactly. Or, or according to the company, 19% of people who keep using the phone in a public restroom end up dropping it in the toilet. (laughs) So (laughs) that's some crazy statistics. I wonder how they got those. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So this they hope to sell to companies and restaurants. So if I was to guess, if you had said, what the heck is it? I would have assumed this was some microtransaction device that you have to spend like 99 cents to get out of the stall. Oh, I, oh, I see, yes. Scan this that's QR a, code. You know what? A, that's a great idea. A microtransaction. That's a great idea. Right. And now you can leave the stall. Oh, that's a great idea. Perfect. Perfect. That well, would, yeah. yeah, I just think the marketing, uh, I don't think, People would like us too much if we marketed it that way. But it's a good idea. No. But anyway, if you own a restaurant or a convention center, the name of the company that's making that is called Stallmate. Stallmate. Very cool. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hope that it also helps uh, not break those silly little latches because i that's the worst is when you get into a stall and the latch doesn't even function. So you're like oh. keeping one hand up against the, the stall. Yes. You know, uh, so stalls... So I, when I went to Sweden, um, all their bathrooms are like real rooms. Like even if it's like a bathroom, um, most of them are all gender neutral, uh, and you just there's just a water closet, and you just go in, and uh, oh, okay. there's like okay. two of them uh, or whatever. Um, but I had whenever we uh, did the mine fair, mine mine, mine con. Uh, people from Sweden came over and they were flabbergasted at our stalls. And they were like, why do they, why do they do that? Do, do you think they do that so that people, like, if they're at work, you know, they could see that they're not using the bathroom and they're using their phone in the stall? Like, they were so confused why we didn't have real walls in our stalls. And why oh, they were just flimsy pieces of metal oh, yes, with yes, huge exactly. gaps in between them. They were like, they didn't understand why we would live like that. Like why on earth would we have such <laughs> crummy stalls in all of our bathrooms? They're like, is this to make oh, sure? Well, we do. Us? Well, we do. And, and, and after they get uh, older, then they don't lock because the whole, all the stalls start leaning one way or the other. Mm-hmm. So one stall, the, the uh, bar that goes across doesn't reach the the uh, connecting part. So, the, so as you said, the door just <clears throat> swings open. And in other stalls, the door can't close because it hits, it hits the metal. It, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's horrible. I mean, even <clears throat> just looking at this photo, they would have just been just like horrified. There's that gap right there. Why is that not? <laughs> oh, why is this oh, not a real a, door? Oh like goodness. things like that that we just totally take for granted in a bad way. Uh, yes, exactly. It's like yeah, that's just how bathroom stalls are. Whatever. Yeah, they. That, were that's all. Real upset. That's all we uh, are good for. No, I, I was. We were walking in New York, and there was probably I listened to a forty-five minute conversation about how <laughs> messed up it was and why we had them that way. They were coming up with these all these mm. theories. It's oh just my like, gosh. And we're just cheap. We just just you know cheap stall. Whatever. Cheap yep. way. Yep. Okay, well, we have, this is the last fully dedicated week to CES. We'll still have some CES gadgets uh, coming at you in the next month, but uh, this is the last one where we're only going to focus on CES. Chad's Crappy Corner will come back next week. Um, So if you're a Patreon, uh, check out the poll uh, to choose the Crappy Corner theme. Um, So I guess let's jump into it. Yeah, let's jump in. And the interesting thing is uh, we shot some stuff together and then we uh, went off separately. I went off with Larry Gerson, who shot my video. So the first thing you're talking about, I know nothing about. (laughs) Yeah. So I... (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm anxious to see your video, and it's and it's called Vadar Radar. Vay Vay It's it is a it is a play on words for radar. Um, and the idea is that this can be used in um, situations where you don't want a camera to be under like seeing what's going on in a room, but you still need some type of intelligence to to understand what's happening. So I'll just let the video explain it. Oh, okay. Uh, we great. do great. get a little bit into theory and then also the product. So there is a product that uh, is being used, and I think I do a good job explaining it in the video, but just okay. know that we're getting the theory and also a real product. Here we go. Okay. Hey guys, Chad, and we're here at CES Pepcom. I'm here with Ben in Hi. front of Viar, right? Okay, awesome. So tell me a little bit about, it looks like this is some type of like pocket radar system. Yeah, this is 3D imaging, and I describe it to people as for 200 years, cameras showed you the world that you can see. Yes. And now we can show you the world that you can't see. Right. So our sensor technology looks into objects and through objects. And we started as a company wanting to uh, help with cancer research to identify cancer cells in human flesh. And from there, basically the technology moved to retail so that retailers can track customers in their stores to autonomous vehicles. Uh, and all of it basically is uh, no cameras, um, no wearables. So basically there is no reason not to just use it. Install it, You're right, exactly. Once you've installed it, it yeah, works. Absolutely. So uh, what's the like resolution that it has? So the resolution is based on, uh, like you can see, uh, it's all to do with tracking you as a person. And what we're looking for is in cars, whether or not you're falling asleep. Um, we hope not that someone may have left a pet or a kid uh, in the back of the car. Uh, this is a bathroom product that we've got for elderly. So basically, an elderly person doesn't want a wearable in the, in the bath, and they don't want a camera in the bathroom. So basically, our technology just, you put it on the wall, and it tracks the whole environment, and it notices if someone has fallen. And if someone has fallen, it will talk to you and say, did you fall? If you don't answer, or you say yes, it basically calls someone. And once that person, you can have a two-way conversation with that person and tell them what your situation is. Uh, it can move on, and in later iterations this year, it can monitor your breathing and other type of activities. Uh, breathing, I've been told, is a really important part of someone's <laughs> life. You know, I, I was just thinking that today. You know, if I stop breathing, it might not go so great for me. Absolutely. So it sounds like the, the, the use cases are really, anytime you don't want a camera, uh, but also you need that information of depth and, and, and motion. Absolutely. And so what would like a home consumer, like you mentioned the, yeah. the elderly bathroom situation, yeah. is there anything else that yeah. a home consumer might use yeah. it for? Absolutely, we've got a DIY product that can see through the walls. So once you scan the walls, it basically will stop you killing yourself for drilling into wires or ruining your home for drilling into pipes or you haven't drilled into the right piece of wood, uh, a stud, and that beautiful TV you've just bought is gonna fall on the floor and, and worst case, kill someone, best case, actually just break. So you, uh, our product allows you to see where you're drilling and actually uh, plenty of other stuff. Um, uh, robots that won't kill you uh, in the workplace, that uh, they won't swing. Uh, the technology will stop it once it senses a human being is uh, within range. So how far away and how close up, like what, how, yeah. you know, what, what distance will it see? So it depends a little bit on the, uh, the size of the unit. Um, Pretty much this unit will see probably around to the end of the space over there, so 10 meters or so. Um, and bigger units will see bigger and smaller units a little bit smaller. Uh, the aim is, for example, in the home where we hope to get to is it's a little bit like a Wi-Fi router and then you've got smaller boosters uh, putting in different places. That's the, what we hope to implement this year. And is this product available now for yeah, consumers? Absolutely. This product, uh, Wallabot Home, is available for you to put in your parents' bathroom. Um, it's really, really simple. It, it will be uh, a gadget that mum and dad will not be frightened of, and it won't make them feel old. And right. we think that that's a really important thing. One of the concepts that we've got is that someone should be able to age with dignity. And the moment that you give them a wearable, it's like giving them a tattoo. 
that says I'm old, I'm infirm, I need to be looked after, and old people don't want that. So uh, we hope that our product will allow people to age with dignity. Perfect. Okay. So, and just so I understand everything, we kind of went to from concept to product. The product that you mentioned before of a product in the bathroom that would monitor a person if they fell yeah. is this product it's right here. Product. And does it? So, what a uh, use case? Do, would they talk to it, or would they? Because you yeah. mentioned that, yeah. so it would notice the issue and then right. say something. Like, like you've seen here with the uh, the posture tracking. So if you're sitting, it will see you're sitting. If you fall, it will see that you fall. It will then say, have you fallen? Is everything okay? And depending on whether you respond no, or you say help, or you don't respond at all, it will make that call to your uh, carer. And basically, it will allow you to have a two-way conversation with it through the loudspeakers on there. And uh, what's uh, MSRP? So it's $149.99 with a $4.99 per month service charge. And then where can people find more? Uh, it's available on the web at wallabot.com. Wallabot.com. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thank Ben. Thank you so much. Okay, there you go. Uh, so the, I will admit, and the chat room is kind of saying this too, is the demo was not <laughs> super great. Um, <laughs> It well, was mostly the, a, a talking The, the one demo. thing of the four people, you could see there were four people, but I yeah. could not see when you were doing your hand. It looked like a blob was moving around. Yeah, exactly. It was, and that's that's kind of my first question was, you know, what's the resolution? And the answer wasn't like I was like, is it like a 1080p depth <laughs> map? Like what's going on here? Um, but uh, so he didn't he didn't really answer that all that great. Um, but here it is. This is it, uh, Wallabot. Um, and you know the, the here, price maybe, is okay. But what did, what was the monthly charge? That was four dollars and ninety nine cents a month. Oh, so oh, five, I thought he said fourteen ninety nine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and I actually have not seen this video, but it, but it is true that you you put a you know a wrist device on someone, they might kind of feel like. Oh man, now I am I am old now. Oh my gosh, um, and so uh, this is you know just sits on the corner, sits on the wall. You would basically forget about it. It's not an actual camera in the bathroom, um, but it has a mic in it. But it has a mic and speaker, and it looked like you know it had a little touch screen to connect to Wi-Fi and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, this is one of those products that I would want to give to a third party. And test it out and see does it does it really work? Um, you know what yeah, if I yeah because if it's fall? on one wall in the shower right that's exactly is, what I was just thinking it's like yeah. if it's on the wall that it showed in that video and I fell between the sink and the and the device if the sink was blocking the view of myself would would it notice me yeah that sort of question. Um, so, I yeah. know. It would say, hey, I heard someone fall. Was that you? I can't see you. <laughs> I can't see around this sink here. Are you down there? <laughs> um, exactly. And also things like pets. You know, if my pet comes in the room and lays down to take a nap while I'm in the shower, you know, would oh, it, would oh, it yeah, you know, there's all sorts of questions that I have about uh, its artificial intelligence, basically. Um, so... You know, one one day. The other thing is, is this could be. I could see this being used for security. I could see it being used to even just count people. There's a whole industry around counting people that walk through the door. You know, if Disney instead of having those little stanchions, just could put these in the ceiling, and as you walk through, it says, "Okay, that person walked through. That person walked through. Oh, that person's leaving." Um, you know, I could see that this would be another thing. It's basically, small radar definitely has a uh, uh, has a use case in normal Internet of Things devices. Um, it may just be that this is not the not the one yet. It also all depends could, on how smart it is and what and if yeah. it if it does it correctly. So there you go. And also, if you don't have a lot of money and you're interviewing a criminal. You could just see their outline on the. You could say we don't have we do have no camera. Just sit in front of this radar and talk, <laughs> and then we'll just, we'll just see this blurry image. It'll look so techy. Exactly. Um, oh, weird. It says at the end of the video it says no monthly fee, but then he set a fee. Yay. Okay. Well. Okay. It's new. It's, it's new. new. We don't know. They're feeling their they're feeling their way through. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um, well, right, so you have the next product. 
Yeah, so Larry I and I went to uh, a company that does car technology, and they had two things. Uh, one, we're using our video. Uh, so let's see that one first, and this is it. Here at IAU, Automotive Engineering, and has some really interesting things here. This is my favorite, and this is side window navigation. Where did Marcus go? This would be the side window, the, the passenger, yeah. and what can the passenger do while you're driving? Yeah, the passenger can uh, see through the window and uh, uh, imagine you see a, a restaurant that is interesting for you and then you can click on the restaurant and, for example, book a table, choose a date and a time and yeah. how many persons and then you can book a table, for example. The other thing is that uh, you can see points of interest and you think, oh, that's an interesting building, what is this about? And then you click on a building and you get information about what you see oh, right so, through the window. So the camera is actually looking at what you're passing yeah. and finding the information on Yes, it. that's right. Now, this is, is this on a car now or is that coming? Uh, unfortunately, it's not on a car now, it's coming. It's so coming. in the next two or three years, it's possible in a car. Yeah. It's just uh, called side window navigation? Side window entertainment. Entertainment. Side window entertainment. Interesting. Yeah, so, isn't that interesting? Hmm. Um, yeah, I, it definitely looked like it was highlighting and stuff. And I'm wondering, how would that work if I if I'm sitting here versus sitting here? You know, like how uh, can it uh, know yeah. where my ear or eyes are? You don't hear a side window. Um, also, it has to be the. Uh, I, I guess the camera maybe is built into the bottom of the side window. Right. Or drill a hole through the side of the car. I don't, I don't yeah. know about that. Uh, well, but I like the cool. idea that when you go by a building, you can just, you know, oh, that's weird. What is it? Just hit the window and it would say yeah. what it is. It's a little yeah. weird that, that you'd be driving sparrow. down the block. In fact, it's an endangered sparrow that just hit the window. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, Although, I don't think you'd be driving down the block and say, oh, I think I'm going to book that restaurant. <laughs> right, you know, exactly. I, I, wouldn't you yeah, rather I'd, see a menu first? <laughs> I'd rather pull out Yelp, what are the reviews? Um, yeah. But for sightseeing, that might be cool. Or might say, hey, the crime rate here is really high. Don't get out of the car. Uh, that'd be a <laughs> no, real bad idea. That, that would be good. <laughs> yeah. So now, the, the second thing is so in the future that I, I almost think it's laughable. But let, let's take a look at what their concept of having your car taken care of in the future will be like. Okay. This might be the um, uh, concept show. I'm not, I'm not sure yet. The uh, first yes, two gadgets yes. feel a little... Yes, I know. Yeah, so we're all doing... We're all, uh, Let's see. The next thing is uh, the piggy bank. It is, it is things That's in the future. That's pretty concept. I'm yeah, going to yeah, not... Yeah. I'll be honest. I'll be a little harsh on that one. Yeah, um, okay. But the, I okay. think the, the fourth gadget is actually a real one. So anyway, and it, it really is. <laughs> but this, this, this is will will taking care of your car ever be like this? Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, so his phone recognizes his face. Okay, unlocks the car. Okay, I mean my Tesla already does that. Does, it does, yeah. sure the cooling circuit was discovered. Consulting service cloud for further information. So his car the said that there was too low. This issue is not critical. Get ready, get now so this is where it gets good. self diagnose smartphone app to confirm your service appointment. Okay, coolant level low. So it says you want to confirm this appointment. Confirmed. Now the, the driverless car takes off by itself. So the car leaves. Alone. Alone. And it drives to. The workshop. The A guy workshop. with Google, or not Google Glass, that's uh, uh, Microsoft's, um, uh, shoot, I forget which one that is, HoloLens. That's Microsoft HoloLens. HoloLens, so he. And now the serviceman just brings over a virtual machine. Now this, this I feel like would be real. Is, oh, could you imagine, you don't have to train your employees, you do it live with HoloLens. Yes, now listen, that now they send him the estimate. Yeah. And say, should we fix it now, it's $108. Meanwhile, someone else is checking the rest of the car and it says your mirror's cracked. 
we, we can replace that. That's $190. Would you like us to do that? And you say yes and no, and they do all that. They go, we just ran they over say, a child. Would you like to pay for <laughs> the health Right, and now it says, okay, your car is on your way back to you, and I assume it'll know mm-hmm. where to park. <laughs> yeah. So do you ever think it'll come to that? You know, the, yes and no. Not, yeah, I don't, so, I feel like driverless cars are, are going to become a thing. Tesla is already, uh, it depends on on who you believe, when how close Tesla is to, to doing this. They have Autopilot 3 coming out, um, and so they, they say that, that with their cars and their hardware, it'll be able to do um, autonomous driving. And, and this sort of thing where it leaves you and it goes find a, find a parking space. It, so far it hasn't been described that it would like leave you, get on the highway, go to a Tesla service center and then get it self-serviced. But, uh, but you know, that's kind of depend on where you live, right? Like, like you have a driveway and, and I could conceive that your car could go somewhere (laughs) and get fixed and come back, but that's never going to happen in New York city. Right. I mean, I mean, maybe, I don't know. 10 million people driving crazy and old ladies with shopping carts and kids on skates where they shouldn't be. Like Waymo, so Waymo is the company that's the, the, the best at this right now. And that's the Google um, self-driving car company. The thing is, is that okay. those cars require LiDAR on them. And so they have these big spinning cans on, on the top and on the sides and stuff. So it can see, and also the hardware, you can't really do any of this in the cloud because if you lose your connection to the cloud, all of a sudden you're driving 60 <laughs> miles an hour on the highway. So they have, these cars have like supercomputers built into them with mesh networks and stuff to be able to detect everything. And Waymo I, even has a video where there's a child playing with a ball and the ball goes into the street and the car stops, you know, cause it can detect all that sort of stuff and it knows what's going on. So I think that it could happen whether or not there is a market for it um, soon is the big question because that sort of hardware just to be put in the car is crazy expensive right now. So in maybe in five years when that, that stuff gets, gets you know moved down in smaller sizes, more efficient, hardware is less intrusive, that sort of stuff, maybe. You might have to buy a whole brand new car in order for something like that to happen. Um, I, and so coming up with this video's um, realization of the future isn't too far away because if your car's already driving itself, it could leave you behind and drive in and get itself repaired. And then I could see an app situation where they send you an update over the app it says, it looks like your service is going to be this, this okay. much. Okay. So I would put there, this there on would... the scale of like zero, not possible, 10, it's going to happen in two years. I'd put it at like a three. Okay. <laughs> three or four. Okay. Okay. Uh, they were showing something else. And, and when the guy said the video is on the website, I thought it was going to be the uh, interim thing, which he said is up and running. Ah. Something happens like, um, the radio stops or, or your entertainment system stops. You call a 24 seven service, uh, center and explain the thing. And they tell you to pull over to the side and to hold your phone up over the engine. <laughs> and then they send you a hologram and you move it around your engine until the hologram locks into place. And then the guy says, see that arrow pointing? Go there. Oh, my okay. gosh. Now, That's pretty cool. Self-diagnose. Yes. Exactly, exactly. And it says, now there's a black box. Open that black box. And see that arrow pointing there? We think your entertainment system went out because this fuse is blown. Got it. Okay, now I, says, I assume people can't follow instructions on YouTube. This is going. This isn't going anywhere. And, and the thing is, is, it would have to be so specific, 
per car per model. I have tried to fix the fuse on my Honda Civic. Honda Civic sold tons of these cars. The year that they sold tons of those cars, it is so hard to find a, any tutorial, any instructions directly related to my model, my year of car. Well, these guys would be sitting in a sitting there alive. Ah, so it'd be a repairman saying, it, it, it's a, this it's is a where I think it is. Sitting there. Yeah, ah, sitting that there would make saying, much more sense. oh, you okay. have the so-and-so. So now we know what, what car you have and... Uh, but yeah. I'm sure when you when you call them, the information from your car is already in their uh, computer. And the guy said, oh, you know, you, you owe uh, $870 on that. So we're not going <laughs> to fix it. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And also, someone said that in the chat room. A repair costing under $200? This is oh, that was in the other video. That was in the other video. <laughs> yes. Well, first of all, I, I thought bringing the fluid up, the brake fluid up for $108, I thought that was high. But then <laughs> fixing the mirror, $190, knowing that they probably had to replace half the door to do that, uh, that that sounded cheap. But anyway. <laughs> anyway, if you drive, there's a lot of neat stuff coming along. Awesome, yeah. And I do, I do think the HoloLens thing that... Uh, that guy was wearing a guy, yeah, and help a guy diagnose with the the hologram on the thing. I actually think that might that could be something, um, because I could really see companies, maybe not for regular cars, but for like say engines, like jet engines that cost a million dollars a piece that are very specifically engineered. I could really see like nuclear submarines. Okay, there's only like a few of those. So the engineering on that has to be so precise. You'd throw a hollow lens on someone and say, okay, you can repair it here. This bolt needs to be at this exact pressure. You know, once you get that, you know, you move on, that sort of stuff. So, um, uh, so anyway, that's, I, I think that that is actually something, uh, coming, engineering coming along. Lens. Yeah. Well, you know, my engine, which was like $25,000, yeah. I said to the uh, service guy, uh, so what can I fix on this? And he said, nothing. <laughs> he, said, <laughs> he said, will you call a uh, service guy? And they come down with a computer and he said, there's a computer outlet under the cowling and he plugs his computer in and the engine tells him what's wrong and where the problem is. And they fixed it. Perfect. So it's not like, not like the old days where no. you could say, Oh, that, that, uh, belt fell off that thing. <laughs> <laughs> no more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, all right. The next thing is something else I don't know about. Is it yeah. Pigsby? Pigsby. Pigsby. So I originally saw this and uh, it looked like a digital piggy bank. It turned oh, out to yes, be... Oh, yes, I remember walking by that with you. And you said, I'll, I'll stay here I and said, do this. I'll go interview him. It turned out to be a little bit more complicated than I expected. And I just didn't have the heart to tell it to his face. So <laughs> we'll, okay. we'll talk a little bit more after the video plays. Okay. Hey, guys, it's Chad, Showstoppers 2019. I'm here with John and Pigsby. So I can see this is a this is it's a adorable little pig, cute little LED face. Uh, but what does it do? What would people use it for? Well, this is a child's friendly financial assistant. It's basically it's about teaching kids great money habits. So today the world is increasingly cashless. There's no notes, no coins. We're trying to recreate the piggy banking experience that we used to have where parents rewarded great behaviors with, you know, small amounts of monies that you'd, you'd store in your pig. And that's not always possible today. So we're trying to make learning about money fun with Pigsby. So you've got a device, a connected app um, that lets parents create tasks, give allowances to children, they receive notifications on this really cool device. And there's a great app that kids can then visualize their savings in a really engaging way. So bank statements, very dry, very boring. You know, you can see what's gone in and what comes out. Here, you know, money is growing on trees as you kind of earn it. And actually pigs do fly. So, you know, when a child, when a child kind of, sorry, when a child completes a task, yeah, they see a cloud that they can use to kind of nourish and grow their money tree. So they've tidied their bedroom, they're going to earn 
Five Wallow, which is the token that Pigsby runs on. Um, they can rain that down on their tree and you'll see that the tree is going to grow with another branch on it that lets them kind of visualize um, you know what they've earned in a, in a really in an, in an engaging and a fun way but the, the important thing here is it's teaching them how to value their time so for example you know if you've um, if you've tidied the dishes or sorry tidied your room five times in a week wash the dishes once you can understand that some things are worth more than others but also you know if you're then going to buy something with that well how many times do I need to tidy my room how many times do I need to do something to kind of make that goal come true and so there's a di direct link of effort to income sort of Absolutely. situation now this isn't just uh, that like the first time I saw it I kind of imagined the parents would just kind of add fake money into the account like oh yeah this is this is your budget and then I'll be spending the money but it's not like that at all this is real money that parents would have to load into the app or or in in, in that way yeah so um this uses real money, so real money is turned into Wallow, which is a cryptocurrency that Pigsby runs on. And that can be the smallest sums of money because this is really about rewarding great behavior with kids. So it's about as little or as much as you as you want that to be. Um, once you're done playing with Wallow inside the Pigsby ecosystem, you've then got a Wirex um, Visa card, which will allow you to spend that anywhere that takes um, Visa in Europe right now, but it's going to be coming to the US soon and Asia as well. And you mentioned, you know, there's a kids app and also a parents app. Yeah. So the parents have a way to monitor, maintain and, and see everything yes. that's going on. The parents have all sorts of control in terms of, you know, setting tasks, um, gifting allowances, but also how kids spend the money as well. So this is for kids age six and up. You know, the card is for the family. You're going to want some control over where they then spend that money. So, you know, can they spend it online? What are the limits around that? All of that's going to be configurable by the parents so that this is a safe thing for children to use and that the parents, as you say, have control over that. Was there a specific reason why you chose to uh, go at this from the cryptocurrency angle that gets changed into Wallow? Yeah, so there's, there's actually lots of advantages of that. So today, families are increasingly global. And, you know, piggy banking has always been about the smallest sums of money. So if you want to send, you know, 10 cents, 5 cents from, you know, a bank account in Australia to a bank account in the USA, well, actually, the cost of, of that transaction is going to be much more than the value of what you're actually sending. So doing it on the blockchain means it's instant and it, doesn't, it actually doesn't cost you anything. So it's making it possible for a whole family to connect around a child's financial education wherever they are. So that's one thing that parents can do through the app is they can invite an aunt, an uncle, a friend to, to take part in a kid's financial education. Um, the other thing that's really interesting as well is that every device, when you buy one, so they're available, they'll be available for $99. Um, each one comes with 200 wallow, so you can start playing straight away as soon as you take the device out of the, out of the box. But creating our own token also means that we've got a pool of tokens that we can use to reward users based on activity, gameplay, achievements, and so on and so forth. So kind of like you get interest in a bank, for saving money. Here, we're going to be able to give you tokens to reward great behaviors and just make the whole thing more fun. So, you know, your parents will give you Wallow, but you'll also get some Wallow from Pigsby to, to reward the effort that you've put in as well. That's cool. And can you just give us like a general overview, like what do the buttons do? Yeah, what so, was up? Um, so, that, so basically, the, there's various things you can do with the device. You can shake it. It will show you um, a balance at the moment. There's no money in there, which is why it says zero. But, you know, that would count up. Um, it also, I'm going to just turn this off and on again so you can see how the LED matrix works. But um, there's an LED matrix behind this that, you know, it can. you can see characters form on here as well. So if I sent a task to this now that was like tidy your room, then that would appear on the device in the same way that you've just seen the words Pigsby appear. So, you know, think about this as being a pager for kids, you know, when mum or dad is at work and they say, right, I'll be home soon, tidy your, dish, tidy your room, you know, wash the dishes, whatever it might be, they'll get the notification on here. They can stick this on the fridge, put it by their bedside table. You know, it's their financial assistant. Love it. Thank you so much, John. Yeah, thanks very much, John. Thanks. Okay.
Oh my God! So which where oh. did you get lost? Was it blockchain? Uh, well, or was it, it Wallow? One thing is, <clears throat> uh, I got a note from Patreon <clears throat> saying that I should download the Pigsby Kids app because my parent Chad Johnson was going to send me some money. So I guess you're obviously on this system. Oh now. yeah, I'm. I'm. Oh so my God! And uh, what the? <laughs> What ninety nine? I didn't. I didn't. I did not have the heart to tell him to his face. I thought this is one of the worst gadgets I have ever seen. So let's go down the list. For the, the first thing, the first sentence he said, totally sold. Okay, it is a it is a little digital wallet that has a display on how much money you get. Uh, the parents can use an app, and instead of it looking like bank statements, it looks like a cool little tree. And, and parents and kids can be on the same page on how much money they have. Loved it. Okay, you start getting into blockchain. Your money gets transferred into Wallow so that it can be international. I don't know how many international families there are that need, it, need international. Well, you, know, you know those three-year-olds dealing in Russian coin. If this and... isn't a good company totally set up to launder a ton of money, I don't know what is going on. Then the device costs ninety nine dollars. So, well, asked, you get two hundred wallows, which is equal to what forty nine cents. Who knows? And it's a cryptocurrency. <clears throat> Cryptocurrencies are not doing that great right now. They're really not. Like, okay, you put a hundred dollars in here, child. Sorry, the crypto markets didn't turn out today. Now you only have two dollars. Like. This is, the this the is kid comes back in. The good humor man doesn't take this. Can I just have five dollars, <sighs> American? I don't know. I, I don't know what. I don't you know. know. This, this, the next year at this time when we do our worst of, we'll see if the website is. Did he yeah. give a website? Uh, let me look. look. I, I don't was it? I uh, what's the name of that thing? Pigsby. Pigs, Pigsby. Pigsby.com, maybe. Yeah. P I. G Z B E. It does. Pigsby.com. Piggy. A piggy wallet, not a piggy bank. Also, the um, kids even know what a piggy bank is. <laughs> yeah, man, man, I, I don't know. But they definitely don't know what Wallow is. <laughs> Why? This is the, the one question. The one question I want answered. Why? And, and you have to carry a whole device. I don't know. This is crazy. And there's a real credit card. Give, give a child a credit card. That seems like the worst idea. Give them cash so you know when they spend it. I don't want, I don't want my child buying something uh, randomly on the I internet. No. Yeah, this is... Um, anyway, so that was Pigsby. That was That's Pigsby. Okay. And now back to the <laughs> real world <laughs> with a product that's easy to understand. Let's go to First Alert. Oops, missed it. There we go. So we're at one link from First Alert. Now, a couple of years ago, we were here. One link lets you add music to the smoke detectors through your house. Then last year, they added Alexa. And now they're adding... Wi-Fi mesh technology inside your alarms. Can you believe it? No, this is great. So people who have a house probably have a detector in every room. They should have. They should, they should have, okay. So now, but there, there has to be a sender, right, that sends? Yes, yeah, so our Wi-Fi mesh technology, uh, there's a node that connects to your router, and then you can have an alarm, such as the safe and sound, and it provides your home with uh, Wi-Fi mesh. So additional coverage, speed, and cybersecurity to your home's network. Okay, so when you buy it, you would buy the one that has Alexa and mesh. You can choose to buy it just with the mesh, or you could choose to buy the version with Alexa built in. Oh, okay, and is this out now? This is coming out in Q2 of 2019. Okay. We're really excited to enhance peace of mind into cybersecurity, too. Okay. Uh, is there a possible price point now? The price point is still being defined. Um, but it will be compatible with what's in the market today. Okay, and it's called One Link Connection? Yes, it's called One Link Connect. And the great thing about this too is since it's on the ceiling, the signal is dispersed throughout the different floors of your home more evenly. So commercial solutions offer ceiling placement of Wi-Fi. Why not do it in the home as well? That's great. So because there's no extra holes to drill? 
it, it's you already have that placement for your hardwire alarm, so why not have also the connection aspect? I think that's a great idea. One link, connect. That's the system, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, that's so it. we've seen lots of uh, Wi-Fi solutions use mesh technology. In fact, the yes. Wi-Fi in my house. Um, I use the Google version of it, the Google little pucks that all mesh together. So that's smart to use the power that you probably already have installed in your ceiling to add this. So not only is it a smoke alarm, but it's also a Wi-Fi station that will continue to uh, propagate throughout the house. That's a, that's it, pretty cool. Exactly. And you can uh, order it with, also with Alexa or now they have Google Home. So if you're installing these in every room, you can have... <laughs> you can have everything. I think it's a clever idea too. Um, since you probably want to have repeaters through the house, this is just an easy way to. Uh, but, but they have to be hardwired, right? Uh, as she as she mentioned, because they're listening all the time, uh, Alexa or Google Home. Um, so, anyway, she said they'll be out in June. But then, <laughs> after I edited the, the tape, I, I emailed them and I said, you know, does First Alert still just make smoke detectors? <laughs> Are they I still said, in that business? Yeah, I know, I know. I said, because I just live in an apartment. She said, oh, I got to send you something that, that we came out with. And she sent me two of these, which is great. It's the First Alert carbon uh, smoke and carbon monoxide detector, but a built-in 10-year battery. Oh, Wow. So you never have to change the battery. Oh, yeah. And also, it's kind of clever because it comes in a clamshell pack, but it's totally, you just lift this tab and oh, it just nice. rips all the it's way perforated up. perforated for you. Yeah, so you can get this guy out. And they also pointed out that it's 50% smaller than their older alarms. I like that. Uh, so it's very... Uh, Nice up against the ceiling, and the retail is like twenty five bucks. Yeah, it was so, here. It is on Amazon twenty four ninety seven. Oh, twenty four ninety seven. Yeah, super good. So it's CO and smoke. I like the battery thing because uh, here in the city they have to have them all through the halls, and when when that battery runs out, even if it's the one on the fifth floor, <laughs> yes, everyone I hears can, it. <laughs> hear it. I know there's something about the 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 pitch that they picked for that that is so annoying. That's the point, I, 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 I guess, you know. Yeah, I can't believe <laughs> you it. can hear it. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. I yeah, I guess it is the point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh so that's first alert and j just look for the I think it's called the 10 year alarm that's from first cool. alert. Uh you know, something went by er er earlier I think that that company with the pig the Pigsby thing. Yeah. Someone said they raised one hundred and eight thousand dollars. Yeah, I was just looking at that. Is it <laughs> looks like they uh, were on Indiegogo. Oh man. And yeah, so so here it is. It looks like on Indiegogo helps kids develop great money habits. Yeah, hundred hundred eight thousand dollars. We are in the wrong business. I know. It was definitely enough money to make their own cryptocurrency. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, and, and you know, when you bank with Primo Toys, I think you know that oh, it's... Oh, yeah. It's going to be Primo, at least. This is some Primo Toys. Primo. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, with that, let's jump into Dick's Gadget Warehouse. They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy When gadgets pass away He takes them out to play In Dick's Gadget Warehouse Foghorn And so in this cold I trekked up to Dick's Gadget Warehouse Looking for an old CES gadget And I found from CES 2011 Even the press release Celestron introduces the personal locator GPS tool. Whoa. It is a way to find your way back to a target location. <laughs> Works anywhere in the world where a GPS signal can be reached. There's a photo of it. 
So part of the thing was that it was going to be easy to use. And then it's not so easy. <laughs> it came out. People it realized. came out. <laughs> and I never used it because this is the, it's easy to use. And then when you get to the bottom of this, it tells you to go to their website to download the real instruction manual. Well, um, so what do you, what do you think this sold for? That, that um, uh, manufacturer suggested wait, retail what, what year was this? Uh, no, 2011. So it's, uh, eight oh. years old, uh, hmm. eight, eight CESs ago. Hmm. I would guess probably like 250 bucks. Oh, all right. Well then it was a bargain. Oh. It was a, a hundred bucks. Oh. Uh, that it could remember 20, uh, points of interest or 20, every, every time you went, you know, made a turn to something, you hit the button to mark it. Oh, and so it doesn't have like a map. It's just like, you points. know, it, it's not a map. It's <laughs> just, uh, you follow I, I the remember. arrow back. <laughs> uh, and, and, I, I went and, camping with a friend who had one of these and, uh, we went hiking through the mountains and he was like, Every time we'll hit hit the button, and we'll have a map of how we got back, until we got so deep into the mountains that the GPS signal didn't work, and so we went for like two hours without a GPS signal, and we come out on the other side and find out a GPS signal, and it's just a line to line. So, so it looked pretty good at the beginning, and there's a yes, straight yes, line yes. to where we picked up the GPS signal again. Uh, right. So not so useful there. And then they like to add. <clears throat> You're supposed to go in, and when you mark it, you go in to a little menu and find a picture of what you're at. So you can put in a little picture of your hotel, oh. a little picture of coffee cups as you stopped at a restaurant, a little picture of a shopping basket if you stopped at a store. Anyway, it's no longer available, but I... I, I thought it was funny because I, I, I gave you a link to Amazon where uh, in stock on February 10th. I love this. <laughs> it's been discontinued for many years now, oh, but we'll have it, it in stock on February 10th, 2019. Hmm. Huh. Um, oh, and that, oh, you know what? And that's the crap one. Uh, this one? Oh, the, this one. The, this one, this one only oh, can remember five different locations. Oh my gosh! Why would you even need that? Yes, and the other one, the master one that retailed for a hundred bucks, uh, can do twenty locations. Wow! But you know, I can't bet that you, I could get at least that, up to a hundred on my phone. Is what I was just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say. I think this was just before uh, smartphones came out and oh, had yeah. like. 30 apps that could pretty much do the same thing for free or a buck 50. Yeah. So. Yeah. The, the cell phones really destroy the GPS market. Um, and the camera market. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That too. Uh, yeah. Uh, the driving GPS. Anyway. Well, it's called specific. Retrace. If you're still in love with this device, it's called the Retrace. The Celestron. You need 20 points of interest retrace. with an icon. <laughs> Yes. And get retraced. Well, if you want to just use the neighborhood and you only know five places to go, buy the cheap one. If you're going to go geocaching and you need, you know, only five points, you can use it. There you go. There you go. Good. 49 that, bucks. Let's move on to the letter. And our letter is from Mo, a frequent contributor to the show, Mo Torres, who says, guys, I saw this and I thought, what a great idea. It's too bad my kids' entertainment runs on batteries, Mo. And this is what Mo found, in case you have kids that are... <laughs> It's a token you know, timer. Uh, it's a, oh, it's a piggy. It's a piggy bank. I'd buy it's this a, over, the, it's a over the piggy bank. bank. Yeah. So you connect. I, I was looking through the, the reviews and someone said, well, what if they're all using different devices? And they said, well, hook this to your router. And then when the router goes off. So, so this is a the power. What is it? What is it shutting off? 
for the it, It's shutting off your power, but wow. you can hook it to your router and shut the router. <laughs> now, uh, surprisingly, so a lot of people like this. Mm-hmm. It looks like and, it. And so the thing is, they are, it's, it's like a cheaper, ver- a slightly cheaper version of uh, Piggies. I keep forgetting the name yeah. of that thing. Pig's Beat. So kids work for tokens. those coins, those tokens. And each token is worth a half hour of time. Wow. Uh, someone said it's no good because a real quarter works. But then a lot of other people said a quarter does not work. Hmm. Um, so I'm not quite sure. I, really I would want to see the pay. back of it. I want to see what. Yeah, I know. I know that uh, I went through every photo there. It's it's terrible. And the description, it just says works on any device from zero watts to 250 uh, volts, I guess. So, you, oh, there you go. Plug it into the wall. Yeah. What hmm. is this? This is, the, I guess, the, <laughs> the instruction manual. But yeah, so I guess you plug it, plug it in there. Oh, that would make sense. I was just thinking like, okay, if you just plug it in, couldn't you just unplug it from the token timer? But I guess that's locked in there. So whatever oh, it is will not uh, be powered up if the token timer's not running. Right, so, yeah. and they give, they give you like fingerprint tape <laughs> so that if someone tried to take it off, uh, you can uh, analyze the fingerprints. <laughs> and- <laughs> Not really, <clears throat> but they, they do have tape that detects that someone has tried to take it off. It's up to you to determine which of your kids or cats <laughs> tried to take it off. I like it. Only $60. Uh, you know, that's not too oh bad my God. Yes. for a parent um, struggling to keep their kids, uh, you know, away from the, the games or the TV or the devices. It's not that and They want them to, to earn their own keep. Yeah. Could you imagine if there was a parent situation too? Oh no, I gotta file that report. Give me, give me a token. <laughs> give me a token. I need it. I need to get, get, the, oh, get on the right. Wi-Fi. I couldn't do my. I couldn't do my homework because my <laughs> parents were out. out and I, could, I couldn't earn a token. That's a oh new excuse. Gosh. Yeah. Yeah. That's a new excuse. That's pretty funny. Um, anyway. Oh, by the way, yes. Um, if you have a video, uh, we would love to see it. Anything about a gadget, we do have a couple of videos. We have one more from Mo and one more from, uh, I think, Angela. Uh, But we we would love videos from people who haven't submitted before. Maybe a famous person's mother might uh, like to make a video (laughs) for us. Uh, Can be anything to do with a gadget. Two to three minutes. Use your phone. All we have to do is see you, uh, uh, see it. And hear you, uh, horizontal format. Go to YouTube, and when you upload it, there's a drop down menu. You can click unlisted if you only want people with the URL to watch the video. Uh, send the URL to us at mail at gizwiz.tv. Mail at gizwiz.tv. Anything to do with a gadget. We love it if it's an old gadget, but something you just bought, something you bought and hate. Um, do it. Awesome. Mail at gizwith.tv. You get a copy of Mad Magazine, the latest issue, and a now 38-year-old Alfred E. Newman picture autographed to you. Awesome. You know, I have uh, someone personally that I want to say thank you to, uh, and that is our patrons over at patreon.com. Oh, <laughs> Gizwiz, I, I, I get you on edge there <laughs> for a bit. Um, a patron, no, they our- are... Patrons are wonderful. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you, everybody who has supported the show uh, in the past and who continues to support now. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. We are an independent show, and so uh, it's awesome when you guys give back to the show. You can do so at patreon.com slash gizwiz. Patreon is a reoccurring payment. Every time we publish an episode, uh, you guys donate just a little bit, and we're seriously just asking for just a little bit. If that's not your thing, you can head on over to our website, gizwiz.tv, and click on the Patreon tab. There's a PayPal there for a one-time donation. Whatever you do, however you support the show, thank you so, 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 so much. It's super awesome that you guys are generous enough to help support the show and keep it going. So big thanks to you guys. While you're and there, to Sean, who Sean in the chat room says you're welcome, Chad. So God, I assume he's thanks, John. Thank, thank you. you, Sean. Thanks, okay. Sean. And if you're not a Patreon, you better 
We already, we already thanked you. <laughs> um, someone says, can you donate Bitcoin? Soon we'll be able to accept Wallow, uh, yes, for, to, Wallow our, we to our piggy banks. <laughs> um, I'll get right on that. Uh, <laughs> if you head on over to gizwiz.tv, that's where you can see the show live about 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern time. We go live uh, to all of you wonderful people. There's a fantastic community in the chat room right now, so please join the chat room if you watch the show live. If not, don't worry. You can catch all of our episodes on our website, gizwiz.tv, or you can subscribe in whatever podcatcher you love the most. And so please do at gizwiz.tv. Gizwiz.biz is Dickie D's site where he writes up wonderful reviews and descriptions about all of the gadgets that we talk about. So make sure you check out Gizwiz.biz for all of those. And while you're there, play What the Heck Is It? The game show online. This is the gadget, the whole gadget, and nothing but the gadget. This is something that you would have bought and used at some time. Uh, it's pretty obvious to me uh, that this is a, uh, a, a cutout for a T-bone steak. Uh, you would just kind of slap this on any bit of meat and then uh, it would be, it's like a cookie cutter for steak. <laughs> if you think you know what this is, get a guess on over at gizwiz.biz. There are six mad magazines for correct answers, 12 mad magazines for funny, clever, hilarious, and interesting answers. So get a guess and get creative over at gizwiz.biz. Is that and that about wraps it up for the show. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. We'll see you next week. I'll be here.